Folks, over the last five months or so, you know that we have started a school community called One Rental at a Time. And over the last several weeks, you've heard me talk about we are being number three, number four, or number five in the real estate investing world. But what I've done is I've reached out to the number one school. I want to learn about what she is doing, uh, her environment, her community. But let's celebrate it for a minute. Let's celebrate Andrea's great performance. Here, here it is, Andre. I don't know if you've seen this view before, but you are the number one real estate investing school. There are 306 schools and you are number one. What do you think, Andrea? That's pretty cool, right? Very cool. And if you didn't tell me, honestly, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably a good thing, right? You just keep doing the work. Uh, yeah. This is something that, that I track a couple of times a week. And uh, about three weeks ago, you were number seven or eight. And whatever you have done the last two weeks, skyrocket, great performance. Uh, you are the number one school called the Investor Club. That is amazing. Let me stop sharing. I want to ask you, what is your story? What's your background? Tell us about that. And then we'll talk about all the great work you're doing in school. Okay. Well, Michael, first off, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I love when people just have the stones to reach out to someone randomly on Instagram and say, hey, let's go into a video. I love it because I always do it. <laughs> and people nice. say, huh, you're, you're a little weird. I'm like, no, man, I just like, you know, uh, the environment to share stuff, the good stuff that is going on right now, especially on social media. So um, to make my story uh, a little short, so I came from Venezuela in 2017. Uh, I came with my daughter. She was one year old. I was a single mom. Uh, recently graduated as a general surgeon in my country. But I just didn't see the future the way I thought it would be when I decided to be a physician. So uh, economy, uh, politicians, everything went to the crap. So I came here, not a lick of English. Uh, I started doing babysitting. So basically the kids kind of taught me how to speak English. Um, it was a really tough time. So two years, two years in, I was working, you name it, I did it. And there was a point that I say, listen, I'm, I'm done with this lifestyle. I can't just keep working and, and then put all the money in rent, car, insurance. And then my daughter said uh, enjoyment. And the enjoyment is like just two days a week. So mm -hmm. I decided to send my daughter back to Venezuela for a whole year. And then I worked my ass off. Like I worked over a hundred hours every single day uh, for a year. And then I got her back. In that meantime, and craziness and stuff of me working, I met my husband, my now husband. He introduced me to real estate. He was just starting. Um, he did everything crazy like the wrong way at the beginning he was just exiting corporate america and then he dumped all his money in real estate but he dumped it the wrong way so mm -hmm. he decided to open a construction company get a bunch of tracks get all the contracts on payroll it was a fucking nightmare so me being a latina and using my two cents of logic i'm like dude but why would you have these guys on payroll they will take forever to do just one project and, uh, you know, my, my dad has a background of working in, in construction and that stuff. So I was doing math and everything. And I'm like, there are a lot of things that I don't, I don't think they match. So COVID happened and everything went to crap. So um, he started bleeding super bad. He got a lot of money from investors, like a million dollars. He almost filed bankruptcy. And I said, listen, let's stop this right here. You're not going to file bankruptcy. I might know no real estate, but I know numbers because that's what I like. So I started doing a lot of math. We fired everyone and we basically rebuild the company, not filing bankruptcy. Uh, so that was my start. Basically, we started building a portfolio. We have 197 doors right now um, between commercial and residential real estate. And then in 2022, to make it short, <laughs> we, we have a, a, an office, we have employees, especially virtual employees. So in 2022, my husband pushed me to open my social media for Spanish people. He's mm -hmm. like, Andrea, you're very inspiring. You did all this stuff. Like, why you don't teach what you know and what you did to get where you are right now? I say, okay, let's do it. So I started December 2022. I put a lot of content, like free. I never asked for anything. And then in September, 2023, I launched my first uh, in-person event. 50 people show up from 15 different states of the United States. I don't That's know awesome. how, 
<laughs> they just show up and I ask them, they are like, well, you, you're very, you know, unique and we like your style and, and, and the way you do your ads and stuff. So everything pretty much that solidified my, you know, my eagerness to be on social media. Mm. So then I continue, um, I open my TikTok account, YouTube account, I continue to give, give, give um, a bunch of stuff in my website, they are for free, so I'm, I'm a giver, but then my husband is like, okay, you're a giver, but it's time to make yeah. some money out of this, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I haven't come this way that. for once. <laughs> yeah, so Andrea, it's been two years, so I said, okay, so let me do this. So I started um, to open up different routes in my brain of how can I help the Hispanic community? So some of them, they don't have enough capital to invest, let's say, in a property or in a flip, but they have enough capital to make it, to multiply it. So, so I started proposing, what about if we stick your, let's say, $40,000 into this property, you wire the money directly to the title company, and you become my private lender, and I give you an 8% return in eight months, in six months or or before. Like, if, if we sell the property in three months, you get your money in three months, and it's a flat number, 8% period. Right. And people right. were like, oh, this is amazing. So we started away. Then I launched an online training for wholesaling. Mm. And I explained to them how to do wholesale because it's like a side hustle. You can just send me the deals. I close them. My team close them. And we just send you a check for the JV. Mm. Um, and they, I mean, I started having so many ideas. I connected these people with... Uh, traditional lenders so they could get a DSCR loan, a conventional loan, and I will sell them my properties. I didn't I didn't need the realtor, the realtor's fees. And I think all that hard work paid off because now I have a lot of testimonials. Like people yeah. that they share their story, they are like, this is so easy. Everything is easy with Andrea. Why is this that easy? I say, no, no, no. It's easy <laughs> because I'm protecting you, but this is right. not fucking easy. If you want right. to get to the nitty gritty and you really want to start in real estate, now let me explain to you how. So I launched my second big event in September this year. I invited four big people in real estate. And since that moment, everything went super, like everybody started getting super excited. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to open the school account. This is the moment for me. Nice. So I open it and I don't know, I think in less than a week, we hit 200 members. Yeah, um, It's a pretty affordable account. Um, it was $37, the launching price, but now it's at 75. I think 75 is a little too pricey for people, but also I, so what, what is happening in a school is like, I am giving, if, if before I, I was a giver, now it's more like mm. we're giving everything away. Like, um, all the, for example, all the books I put together is there, uh, yeah. the online training I did for wholesaling is there. So what I do is like my team, they post everything. So constantly right. contribution contributions. So I train everybody that came into the school to make it a community. And I yeah. say, you guys have to play the game. So you guys have to be constantly posting, uh, sharing something, uh, comment likes, and yeah. that has to be on a daily basis. Yeah, as, as you, I, I, I like I love that about school because sometimes you go to platforms and it's, it's like YouTube, it's all subscribers or some vanity metric. Yes. What you can definitely see in school is it's the activity of the community. There's probably some weight to quantity, but it is not that. It is definitely interaction. So you're definitely onto something, encouraging posts, like comments. Uh, yes, that's that's how you skyrocket, and that's how you, that's why you're the number one real estate investing community because that's where you focus. So great work. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't even know, but I, so my, my, my initiative was like, I want this to be a real community, not just real estate. You can learn if you have, for example, a immigration issue, you let me know. And I connect you with an attorney. If you have, I don't know, you're homeless. You let us know. We connect you with housing, with section eight. It's like, we have so many things going on that I just want to help. But yeah. for me to help, you also have to be committed to a payment because unfortunately things that are free, people don't get the commitment. Yeah. So um, you pay, you pay posting, attention. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've been posting some of the videos and what I do that I think it's the biggest stuff for a school is that I put the video that you have to be on level five or level oh, four. Oh, interesting. 
interesting. Right? Yes. Yeah, so if the person is not in that level, they cannot open the video. Oh, I didn't. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. Also to chat with me. If they want to chat with me, they have to be in level four. Got and it. you really have to hustle to get to level four. You have to literally come. That's why I get off school and in 30 minutes, I have a hundred notifications because nice. people want to constantly be doing something so they can scale on the, on the levels. I like that. Uh, yeah. I, I like the levels because I think in level seven, you get to go to the headquarters of um, Alex Hormosi. Mm -hmm. So I, I went so. there already. Um, I, I went there. Uh, they, they were having uh, this stuff, like a two-day event, uh, Alex and Leila, and it was amazing. And I'm like, yeah. if I could get back and explain everything we did in a school, I would do it. So, But the only way for me to do it is that the people are really engaged. Yeah. So they can do it, too. I love that. So where, where, where are you based? Are you based in Florida, or where are you? In New Jersey. So you're in New Jersey. So you, you've already come out to Vegas to see the Hermoses? Yes, I Once? did. In nice. June. Okay. All right. How was how was that? They are they as good in person as they are online? Oof. Well, we're speaking English. They will understand everything I'm saying here if they <laughs> want to hear me out. So I'm gonna be gentle. But um you know that when you go to a place, typically you have expectations. Sure. So I'm very perfectionist and I try to be above and beyond expectations. So mm. when we went there, it's amazing. Content is great. Place is great. But they only show up for one hour each day. And that's ah, all. So you get their team. Yeah. So it's like you were excited to see them and at least take a picture or something. And that doesn't happen. It's not uh, bad at all. Like I learned yeah. so much. But yeah, so basically Alex went uh, Q&A one hour at the end of the day on Saturday. And then on okay. Sunday, at the end of the day, Leila one hour, Alex one hour. One hour. So it's pretty nice. cool. But also they pick and choose who they're going to answer uh, the, the question. Yeah, of course. So mm -hmm. it's like I was raising my hand the whole time and I didn't get to choose. So it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but no, sucks. but it, it's, it's great. It's great. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, there's a couple of things I want to go back to the story because I've um, I've had this channel for five years. I, I interview people all the time. Uh, one of the ladies I interviewed w went on to be a, a corporate attorney and then realized that, you know, she, she that wasn't for her. And then she became an entrepreneur. I just want to go back and make sure I heard your story correctly. So you're in Venezuela. You go to school, probably lots of school, graduate as a general surgeon. Uh, you are now, I'll call you your, your inner adult, and you realize that that environment isn't, isn't, isn't where you want to be. So you move to a foreign country without speaking a lick of the language. You start cleaning homes or whatever you do, any job you can. Not many people make that choice. So was it, was it because you had a daughter that you just want you? That's, I mean, that's a, that's a huge step back. Some people call that a huge step backwards. Yeah. I love the question because um, I got asked one time by a broker if I felt I was a special because of that, right? Like, how, how can you make a decision like that? Are, are you a special person? Like, were you chosen by something? And I'm like, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't know what's the why behind everything, but... Since I was 14 years old, maybe because I'm coming from a broken family, um, a lot of uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, ups and downs. My dad had it all and then lost it all. So all those swings made me be very independent. So I was always very good at, at school, like um, A plus. Uh, like if I didn't get an A plus, I was crying all the time. Like I wanted to kill myself. I oh, was gosh. always... The nerdy person reading in the in the room, but I I also was like a cool person. Like I always have the charming personality, so I got the two maybe to offset my own insecurities. So I say, you know what? I want to be a doctor just because it's the only career that is not in my small city, and I can get the f out. So I ah, can move to it was an country. escape. It was an escape. Yeah, it was an escape. Okay. So I say. I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to be the first doctor in my family. Everything is good. It's a great career. Um, I will get to open my medical facility and be independent. So yep. I, I always had the, the thought of let me be independent. I don't want to okay. be a stick to this family. I don't want my dad taking care of me. I want to be by myself. Yep. So 
when I, I got into med school like this because I was my grades were perfect. So I, I put, put the papers in and the next day I was in. <laughs> so I got into med school and um, since that moment, I always felt like I wanted to have so much money to wow. help people because you are in the nitty gritty of the hospitals, everything, everybody's so poor. Everybody comes to you. Um, mm. I I was doing a lot of um, like the, the night shift. I would get people throwing at me like kids. They, they would die in my arms. I couldn't do nothing. Sometimes oh. you don't even have a CPR machine and you're like, why is this so sad? Like, like uh, uh, I it, back, back in those days, I already visited the United States, Europe, like 22 different countries. And I'm like, I just can't understand why these countries have this and we don't. If mm -hmm. we're supposed to have a lot of money with the oil and this stuff. So it's like, I fell in a place that didn't match with me, with my values, like who I was. And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is not for me. I'm trying to help and I can. Uh, I, I I want to do my best and I can. And I'm frustrated every fucking day. I, I'm, I'm angry. So right. I'm like, I just want to go somewhere that I know my skills. I know who I am. I can make it work anywhere. But at least the place has the opportunity for me and my, my kid. Mm. And that's what I did. I, I just didn't belong. <laughs> that's how I felt. Well, I think it's an amazing story and it needs to be celebrated. I mean, there's lots of, Lots of folks that are in that similar circumstance that probably don't make that choice. They probably just buckle under and, yeah. and frankly, are miserable <laughs> the rest of their life, right? And again, it's not easy. Again, I mean, think about your journey, right? You you make that crazy choice. Then you realize at some point you're, you're, you're in the rat race and not getting ahead. So you, have, you send your daughter home for a year, work 100 hours a week. Again, not many people make that choice. Uh, then you get married, you, your husband, you know, tries to blow a business with crazy overhead in an environment <laughs> where there's a pandemic, that's no fun. And, you know, you just, you just have this tenacity. It's, it, it, you know, we've only known each other for 20 minutes and, and it's just, <laughs> you just have that like dog in you, right. Uh, to keep fighting. So respect. No, thank, thank you so much. I, I, I really think it was, Everything burned inside of me when I saw my dad physically assaulting my mom. It, it was so bad. Like the last one was like a broken school. Like you're mm. like, dude, this is this is too much. And I, me protecting Not my okay. sisters, protecting my mom. Like I will get. I I really think I started believing in God in the moment that I will physically be stronger than my dad physically. And, I, and you're talking. About, I'm an eight year old. So I was physically, I could hold him and don't make him keep hitting my mom. So it's like, I don't know. I I I felt empowered, you know, from a from a from a bad moment, you just think differently and you take it as an opportunity. So that's pretty much how my brain works. It's working for you. I love it. And uh, so if somebody wanted to follow you, reach out, what, what are your websites? Obviously, we'll show the school again. I'll bring that up. But where can they go find all this amazing stuff that you have out there? Yeah, well, everything is in Spanish. That's the sad part. That's okay. <laughs> I hey, there's I, well, English. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So basically, everything is real estate con Andrea. Con is a uh, C O N. With. Yeah, yeah with. in English. Yeah, and uh, you can find me in YouTube, um, uh, Instagram, uh, even in I'm I'm even in Facebook everywhere. Like <laughs> I open all, right. all the accounts. There yeah. you go. So one more time, what is it? Real Estate Con Andrea. I love it. Real Estate Con Andrea. Again, folks, this is somebody who's doing the things. I love. I loved watching you fly up the the uh, the leaderboard. I appreciate you saying yes to some stranger that reached out <laughs> on Instagram. What are your closing thoughts? What What is the thing that you want the audience to know? Um, I mean, your story is so amazing. But what do you want to leave the audience with? I. <sighs> Oh my God, there is so many things I would like to share. I, I will I will say what I always say. If I did it, I think you can do it too. Um there is there is no really limits. Um the limits are done by yourself. And what I found is like being out of my comfort zone is the best place that I can make something happen. So anytime that you feel you are in, in a in a comfortable place just get out get yourself out and continue so you can keep scaling and always find 
don't be afraid to ask like um any you might you might be surprised how many people want to help you just ask yeah. ask for help and they will help you <laughs> yeah much. again it's, don't do it alone right the, the lone yeah. wolf, wolf starves get in a community get around other people doing it i love that you're building a community Spanish community. That's great. Very wonderful. You're helping with all things, immigration, housing, whatever it is. You're just a go-giver. Uh, I think you're leading by example. I think you're showing people to stop having excuses. You know, get if, if, if you got to get mad, get mad. Just change. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's okay. Uh, again, real estate con Andrea is amazing. Thank you for everything. Thank you for saying yes. No, thank you, Michael. Uh, I appreciate this. Um, I actually wish there were more people like you out there <laughs> willing to ask a stranger just to go into podcast because this this inspires people. And it might just take you just how long this this stuff is like twenty minutes, twenty minutes yeah. of inspiration. But put something in plan, man. Like hear it, write it down make every day of your fucking life worse because you just have every day is a gift so make it work get do something that gets you closer to your dreams and and don't lose that because that's why there is so much uh, uh mental health stuff i i don't I, it's not that I, I don't believe it but i also believe you can get out of there um by support by your own self you don't you don't actually always need medications just just go forward. Just fucking kill it. Do it every day. You you Do have the work. energy. Yes, the exactly. Work. Yeah, I, but thank you, Michael. Thank you for this. I, you're amazing, Andrea. Keep it up. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate